Now on the Business Radio X Network, just ask the gals. Social media solutions and education. Hello, everyone. My name is Lisa Benson, and I am with Two Busy Gals. We are having a show today on teens and social media. We are joined by Lainey, Grace, and Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us, girls. My co-hosts today are the owner of Two Busy Gals, Jessica Badowski, and doing live for us on Facebook, we have our newest gal, Joanne Lazowski. Thank you, gals. Jessica, can you tell us about Two Busy Gals and what we do for business in Tucson? Thanks, Lisa. Uh, so Two Busy Gals, we've been in business for 11 years, and we feel the thing we do really well is we work on one thing instead of a whole menu of things. And what we do really well is help businesses link social media and sales strategy so that they can clearly measure what their marketing efforts are doing. Too often in the business world, we find people will offer you rainbows and unicorns and sparkles, and you don't even get, you know, a piece of glitter. So what we want to do is make sure that people are clear on what good business strategy is and how that's going to uh, be of best value to them. And we've been doing it for 11 years, so we're pretty excited about that. So we have classes, we have things on webinars, we're starting to do some video products, we work with content. So we have a lot of options um, to help businesses from the Avon lady to a manufacturing company. Great. Thank you, Jessica. Um, First, I'm going to go to Lainey, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself. Thank you, Lisa. Well, I'm Lainey Caswell, and I'm about 15 years old, and I'm a sophomore in Andrada High School, and I'm involved in the AP Honors Program there. Um, Outside of school I do 4-H, Girl Scouts, and Run Club, and NHS. Um, Otherwise I have a trip, I'm a triplet with my twin brothers and we've lived in the Arizona area about 20 years with my parents, so. Great. Um, Grace, tell us about you. Um, I'm Grace Benson. I'm going to be 16 in August. Um, I mostly do art, but like outside of school I do art outside of school. I do art a lot. I do a lot of art. Um, I show in 4-H. I have a lot of rabbits and chickens. I'm an animal enthusiast. When I get older, I want to be a veterinarian. Um, And that's pretty much it. So you're about to drive. Yes, I'm going to start driving pretty soon. I I got my permit the day I turned 15 and a half. So um, I'm going to start driving, and then I'm going to go into junior year of high school. It's so interesting, the people who get their permit, like, the day they legally can get it, and the ones who are like, eh, you know what I mean? Like, it seems to be one or the other. Like, it's not like, so it's just kind of interesting. So I will will give your mother lots of um, calm tea to drink when you start (laughs) start driving. Yeah. (laughs) Wait, you girls said you did 4-H. Lainey, what are you showing 4-H? I show rabbits and chickens, and hopefully sooner or later I'm going to start dog. And Grace, what are you showing 4-H? In 4-H, I show rabbits, chickens, pigeons, and I also do the arts and photography program. So last month, if you you don't know, I'm the leader. This is Lisa again, and uh, I lead these projects. And if you listen to last month's podcast, you can hear what 4-H is all about. Exactly. Elizabeth, tell us about you now. Um, I'm Elizabeth Badowski. Um, I just turned 15 this last May. And I am going to be a sophomore at Andrada Polytechnic. Um, I do swim outside of school and in school. Oh, and outside of school, I'm a lifeguard uh, for the summer. And in school, I do NHS and I'm part of the peer mentor program now. Um, I also like to do art. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. Can you tell us what the Peer Mentor Program is in case people aren't familiar with that? Uh, Well, the Peer Mentor Program, I also did this in middle school, and it's pretty much there's uh, some kids who need extra help in the district and our school, and so they choose students, and you can apply for it, and there's a whole screening process, and it's a lot, but (laughs) um, it's worth it if you want to help the kids, so 
yeah, and there's different things you can do. You can help teach them life skills, or if they don't need that much help, you're just with them in class, and you just help them get through the day so that they can learn more and have more opportunities when they grow up. I think it's a really cool program um, that actually the Vail School District does in addition to having adult uh, teaching aids for kids that have different levels of either developmental or physical challenges to have a peer mentor because I feel like that is an awesome way to get um, the kids more involved in their classroom and with other students. Absolutely. Um, before the broadcast cast started, we were talking about the schools that the girls go to. And in Vail, we have some really neat options for high school because, uh, what do they call it? The Vail, um, they get to make a choice of what high school they want to go to. And Lainey and Elizabeth go to a really unique school uh, where they get to choose a pathway to help them have a job and and really work and train on the job for when they graduate. So um, Elizabeth, will you tell us a little bit about that and what pathway you have chosen? Yeah, so the pathways are pretty unique to Andrada. Um, it's through the JTED system. And so you can choose any of the pathways. There's things like engineering. I'm doing behavioral health. Um, there's auto, vet tech, medical assisting, things like that. And at the end of your, you start it um, your sophomore year, and at the end of your three years, once you graduate as a senior, you usually have a certificate, and you can go into that field right away. So it's a pretty useful thing for people who don't want to go to college, or if you are going to college, it's like a head start. So Lainey, tell us about your pathway, and if you have anything to add about what Elizabeth just said, we'd love to hear it. So like Elizabeth said, just through the JTED program, so I'm going to be starting vet tech and vet assisting. So it's going to be more animal-based and working with the different medications and stuff for animals. So I'll graduate with that certificate, and it will probably go through the Pima College, the community college, not so much of U of A. So it kind of helps us get a jump into college, like Elizabeth said. Great. It's really nice because when we went to the orientation, so I was new to the school district, and so I thought, so in the olden days when I was in high school, you were at the school and some people were pre-college and some people were just high school. And then you have what was called VOTEC. And so some of them you saw at the high school, you know, like the typing classes and secretarial, which isn't even a thing anymore. Um, but say the auto mechanic people went someplace else to another building, like and went and did their thing. And so it was very, very separated. But I was fascinated and thought there was such planning on the part of the school district with the pathways when you when they graduate, there's multiple jobs that pay anywhere from like eighteen to thirty dollars an hour that the high school students can apply for and work on while they're um, either going to college or you know pursuing other options. So it's just I thought it was such a neat idea. And one of our um, kids goes to or Elizabeth's brother goes to Sienega, and to me Sienega feels more like just regular high school, um, what I would expect high school to be. But Andrada to me feels like you guys are already on a community college, like a community college campus, just the way the schedule is, the autonomy that they expect the youth to use their time. It's just, it's very interesting. So. Right. And then Grace goes to a different school in the Vail School District that has an even different feel, but um, is also preparing her for a life in college and everything else. So Grace, tell us a little bit about how Empire differs from traditional high school and differs from Andrada. So Empire is a very art-based school. We have a lot of artists there, and then we have a really good theater program as well because we have the Vail Theater of the Arts there, which is where a lot of performances are put on, dance happens there, a whole bunch of things happen. And then we have our art program, which is well-funded. Um, and then we also have a very big science program. So our school is very focused on science and arts. Um, it differs from Andrada because it's not, you don't choose a pathway. They just kind of prepare you for college there. They give you all the classes and, um, Empire is considered one of the schools where we have Corvus, which is a program that the kids who did better in middle school go into. So they get, they have to take all AP classes. They can't take normal classes. Um, and we have a lot of kids there that take those AP classes. Um, 
We don't have pathways, like I said. Uh, and then we're also smaller than Cienega, a lot smaller than Cienega. Um, we actually have to get entered into a lottery and then our names get pulled one by one so we can get into that school. Um, I don't really know what else to say about Empire. Uh, we're, we were one of the first schools in the Vail School District to switch to completely electronic work. So, um, yeah. Textbooks are on a laptop. Uh, they do all of their communications with their teachers on laptops now. So it's very Through different. email or and text, email, depending text. on the teacher. Yep. So it's very different to what traditional high school used to be, and a lot of schools are following it. Empire was the leader, like Grace said, mm -hmm. and actually taught schools all over the United States, and I think yeah. some in other countries, too, mm -hmm. about that program. So It's really fascinating. And just, I know, for example... For us, you know, for Joanne and Lisa and I to say, oh, it's eight o'clock at night and I'm working on this project and I'm not sure what I'm doing, that you could email your teacher and pretty regularly a fair amount of the teachers reply. Yes. You know, not every single teacher every time, but I would think you'd be waiting 24 hours or they'd tell you in class the next day or on the weekends that teachers are really active. Some of them, it's a text system where you can text depending on the teacher and some of them it's email, right? Um, which is a complete different high school communication experience than anything we would have had. Exactly. And they, most all of the teachers, right, have blogs now so the kids can... Um, read their blogs and learn that way and know what homework they need to have done and what are they discussing in class and all kinds of neat stuff. They have links, which is really cool, to outside sources and things that they can use to help them learn even better. So we've got a very diverse group of kids in the room today. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think it'll be pretty good when we start talking about technology because you're already experiencing not just in your school system, but in your life, a different level of access um, that kind of changes how communication takes place. Not only communication, but even mine and Jessica's job. So yeah, we're, we're learning how to market to people all in all different ways. We use social media and you kids are the future. So We've got to learn what you, how to do it for you guys now. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here um, with a little bit of some articles that I put together to, uh, to get the topic going. Uh, according to the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, social media plays a big role in teen culture today. Surveys show that 90% 90 of teens aged 13 to 17 have used social media. 75% report having at least one active social media profile, and 51% report visiting a social media site at least daily. Two-thirds of teens have their own mobile devices with internet, internet capabilities. On average, teens are online almost nine hours a day, not including time for homework. So I like numbers if you can't tell. <laughs> Lisa's our number gal, Statistics. For sure. um, do you... And all of you feel free to jump in at any moment and interrupt each other if you want and just add whatever you want to the conversation. We're all just talking here. So I'm going to ask this question and whoever feels best, most comfortable, just go ahead and jump in. So do you have your own computer, phone, tablet, or iPod? And if so, where do you log into social media? Which one of those, if you have any of those? Um, I usually do it on my phone. Yeah, I use my phone for a lot of things. Um, to the question of where do I log in on, pretty much basically all of the social media websites, Facebook, um, Instagram, Snapchat, Tumblr, Twitter, all those. But you use your phone primarily yes. to log in. Yeah, I have a computer, but I don't use it you for that You don't log in. No. I have an iPod and a computer, but my computer is mostly for school. On my iPod, I only visit usually Pinterest, and that's for stuff if I need ideas to do creative ability stuff. Um, but that's pretty much all I log into. Okay. Um, what about you, Elizabeth? Do you have uh, other computers, tablets, or anything like that that you might log in to a social media account with? Well, I have my computer, but I mostly use that for school, like Lainey. Um, I use my phone, and I log into Instagram, Pinterest, um, I don't go on Facebook all that often, but I still have it. 
well, she has to because she interns for two busy gals and she needs yes. all the young people that come on board end up having to make Facebook accounts, which is a generational difference because there's stuff we need to do as a team, as a business. And they're like, oh, I got to make a Facebook account. Oh, OK. Right. OK. Oh, and you also use your Kindle. So you oh. log into different things, not a social yeah. media platform, yeah. but some of those. What's that thing where you get the fan fiction? It's like a webtoon. Okay. Oh, I love Webtoon. Webtoon. Yeah. I read Webtoons all the time. <laughs> she doesn't really understand how Webtoons work. They're Whatever. comics. They're comics, yeah. but they're yeah. on the phone. Yeah. 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 So it's interesting because, um, so for teens, potential benefits of social media include staying connected to friends, meeting new friends with shared interests, finding community and support for specific activities, sharing artwork and music, exploring and expressing themselves. So I already asked you guys kind of about your accounts, but and some of you are, I know, more active on other things, like Elizabeth just said she's not as active on Facebook. But tell us about your social media usage. I just listed uh, several things that people use it for. What do you guys use it for? Most of my social media is used for posting my artwork. So I post my art on um, Instagram, and then I've been trying to get on Twitter, but Twitter's kind of a hard one to post your art on, so I haven't been. Um, and then most of the time it's just talking and connecting with friends and looking at what other people have posted. Yeah, I agree with Grace. Um, I connect with my friends, but not as much through social media. Um, as well as Pinterest, since I do babysitting and I do have other jobs, I look at Pinterest for different ideas because I can't really remember back to when I was five years old and what I did. So, so long ago. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I look on Pinterest and get different ideas off of there and I can save it to my boards and stuff. Great. What about you, Elizabeth? Um, well, I mostly use Instagram and I don't post too much, but... I mean, I definitely used to, but not anymore. Um, and I, whenever I post, it's more like to just update people I know who also have Instagram on like what I'm doing because that's how I stay connected with them. Like if I see they post something, I'll comment like, hey, that looks cool. Like, are you doing, is that a new thing? Not quite like that, of course, because that was awkward and unfortunate. But, <laughs> but I comment something and that's how I keep in touch with my friends. Yeah, I do the same thing. And you had two Instagram accounts at one time, Elizabeth. Yeah. So why did you do two? Well, my one was a personal account, and that was the one that most of my friends knew. And then my other one was just for fun. Um, I, um, It was just in, an anonymous account, so I could just sort of do whatever without being judged, I guess. Yeah. I think adults think the same things, too. I think so, too. Um, back to the whole account thing. I have four. I have four different Instagram accounts. I have my personal account, my art account, and then I have an account for all my rabbits and then an account <laughs> for all my birds. So there's that. <laughs> so why do four different accounts? Um, because I like to keep my accounts centralized. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want, unless it's like something I'm really proud of, I don't want to post my art mixed in with my personal stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I post my animals on my personal account, of course, but like my rabbit account is more to pr promote my rabbitry and then also get the word out about what I do. I did not know rabbitry was a word until I read your bio for this podcast. Yes. So that was something new I learned. Yes. I was like, rabbitry? Oh, okay. Like the art of raising rabbits. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's interesting too because I would guess one thing you do in 4-H is often um, you can sell animals, right? There's auctions or yes. you get to a certain level. Uh -huh. So the people you want to interact with who are interested in birds may not be interested in rabbits and oh. probably neither are interested in your artwork. I mean, they might be, but... Um, it's kind of interesting to make the effort. I think sometimes we work with businesses and the businesses are like, they're, they're, they don't even necessarily want to have separate 
accounts for the business for on each platform, right? But I think that will change with this generation who's thinking, okay, like you, your one account was a fan account of a lot of stuff in anime that you liked, Elizabeth, right? And you were sort of like, I don't want to mix that with my friends because some of my friends are like, yeah, anime is cool. And some are like, oh, losers. <laughs> anime. Yeah, there's a lot of hate with that. Yeah, I, had, <laughs> I had one of those accounts too, but yeah. I, I deleted it a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> because, I don't use it as much, but it's still there. Yeah, yeah. right. But it's so, I mean, you guys are strategically thinking about how do I digitally present myself and my interests and what are my goals of those, right? So if your art is totally separate, you don't necessarily open yourself up to everyone you know publicly, even in school, critiquing your art because that could be not fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you're using hashtags that promote art to art communities, they're going to give you a much different reception of your art. Yes. And so I think it'll be interesting how this moves forward um, and how that starts impacting in five, ten years. Not only will the technology change incredibly, but the way in which you've thought about organizing yourselves and different interests on technological platforms is going to impact how businesses run so that they're able to connect with you. Good point. So um, the Pew Research Center is a nonpartisan American fact tank based on in Washington, D.C. It provides information on social issues, public opinion, and demographic trends shaping the United States and the world. So since we've been talking about uh, which platforms you guys use, I wanted to put this in your ear. According to the Pew Research Center, <coughs> those ages 18 to 24, Instagram and Snapchat are king. So 75 and 73 percent of that age group use the apps regularly. From 2015 to 2019, historical sh survey data shows that Snapchat and Instagram use has increased among teens, while Facebook and Twitter use has steadily plummeted. Of the more than 8,000 teens surveyed in 2019, 41% chose Snapchat as their favorite social media platform, which was down from 45% in 2018, while 35% chose Instagram as their app of choice. Instagram is the most used platform overall in the survey, even though more teen users preferred Snapchat. So I just wanted to read that to you guys because you both, you and Elizabeth both just proved that Instagram was used more. But I do know that Grace uses Snapchat occasionally. Do you ever use it, Elizabeth? I actually don't have Snapchat, but recently I talked to my friends about it because a lot of my friends have it. And so I asked them, is it worth getting? Because, I mean, I can. I just don't use it now. And I asked them and they said it is not worth it, but that's their preference. So I don't really know. I'll, I keep asking around. Um, <laughs> everyone has a different opinion. So. And I think that's so interesting because the app's free. So we're really talking about like, is it worth my time to download this, figure okay. out how it works? Are you going to communicate with me there instead of Instagram? And what's the value of investing my time there? So... I use, I don't know, I think, I don't, because I've never heard that before. In my year, everyone uses Snapchat. Oh. Like, everyone has one, um, mm -hmm. everyone uses it, and so Snapchat's kind of an easier way to talk to your friends, you know, and it's easier to send pictures to them, because all you have to do is take your phone out, snap a picture, and send it to them. Um, you can also post on your story, which people on Snapchat everyone can see it, and then they can respond to that in a positive or negative way. Uh, most of the time it's positive, from the people I've talked to, just saying. Um, but it's it's weird because everyone uses Snapchat. Like, I see, I see people on Snapchat all the time. So I don't know if there's, like, That's a year interesting. Break so, there. Grace, you're going into your junior year. Yeah, I'm going to be a junior. And you're going into your sophomore year. Mm -hmm. But your brother's going into his junior year, and he was really active on Snapchat for a while. Interesting. And he still has it, and he uses it. Um, it just depends on – he has some friends that are more on Snapchat – and then on Instagram, he never posts any pictures at all. If you go to Instagram, there's like three pictures. I mean, Not it, even. Did he take those down now? No, yeah. he deleted all of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so well, there were three pictures. Then there was a little, you know, girlfriend incident. So, And that's where I got educated on um, that I didn't know that what you create as your avatar – uh, picture, which is the small image, like in Too Busy Gals' case, it's always some part of our logo, that you could 
uh, by posting certain pictures in your avatar, it's sort of like publicly displaying like we're a couple or we're dating or we broke up or there's like all these rules about when you post a picture as your avatar, it's sort of like we're a couple. It's like declaring coupledom, which I, you know, was from a business standpoint, obviously this never comes up. And so it was just like, really? That's what that means? Oh, okay. Who knew? You know? So it's just sort of interesting that even within high schoolers, there might be a difference in that use of Snapchat and Instagram. What about in your groups, Lainey? Do your friends use Snapchat? I know you don't. Yeah. A lot of my friends do use Snapchat. I see it all the time on the buses and um, a lot of people say it's a lot easier, like Grace said, to send pictures and stuff. Um, it's also a way, I don't know if it's easier than messaging while like texting and stuff. Um, but I feel like I'm on the middle. Like if I was allowed to have it, I would have it. If I wasn't, I wouldn't really care right now. Um, but there's a lot of people at our school that do use it and it's a lot. Some teachers actually connect with it through Snapchat. Really? Yeah. I can't believe the teachers use it. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, back to you saying, I don't, you don't know if it's easier than messaging. It's not. So I don't know why I use it all the time. That like I could just, I could just go and text somebody, but I use Snapchat instead. And I, and they're happy you do. Cause they like your metadata. Up yeah. Yet. <laughs> so that's funny. Cause that was my next question. Cause Jessica and I would never be like, check out my Snapchat. We would totally use a uh, text and say, yeah. look at what I just found at this store. Right. So back, so since Lainey mentioned, you know, if she was allowed to, I want to go into the potential risks of social media, which was from that same Pew uh, study. So the potential risks include for teens exposure to harmful or inappropriate contact content like sex, drugs, violence, exposure, exposure to dangerous people, cyberbullying, which is a risk factor for depression and suicide overshadowing or oversharing personal information, exposure to excessive advertisements, privacy concerns, including the collection of data about teen users, identity theft or being hacked, and interference with sleep, exercise, homework, or family activities. So my next question... (laughs) We can look at everyone for that. (laughs) Everybody, all you kids... So my question is, do your parents put limits on which platforms you can use? And if so, do they monitor your social media usage or do you know? Every minute of every day I monitor. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) Considering you don't you didn't even know IGTV was a thing until about a month after it came out because you needed to know it for business reasons. I really don't think so. (laughs) That's why you have teenagers on board to keep Mm -hmm. your stuff up to date. Mm hmm. That's what I thought. Exactly. Uh, My mom, she doesn't really pay attention to my Instagram or any of my social media, I don't think. I mean, she might have spies, honestly. (laughs) She follows me on my personal account. This is when podcasting goes into family (laughs) therapy because there's two parents with their kids here. Lady's like, I'm so glad it's just me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I mean, there was a time where she was very sensitive about me getting social media and she was like no it was like sixth grade and then I got into seventh grade it was like the end and my friend was like look at snapchat and I was like oh this is cool (laughs) (laughs) and and so I downloaded it I was like these filters are awesome like I was new to snapchat I was like oh my god look at this one it's like a unicorn anyways and then I didn't tell her that I got snapchat originally and then like a month later I was like oh yeah mom look snapchat and she was like I can't stop you now, so... (laughs) I think that exact same thing happened with Isaac. What is it with you juniors? Like, all of a sudden... that generation, I guess. Right? So he had permission to have Instagram, and then all of a sudden he was like, well, I was Snapchatting with so-and-so. I'm like, what? Why is there Snapchat? (laughs) And it was, again, from some female from the past. I'm telling you, his social media is all about these females. Um, And it was, yeah, it was, you know, a girl he had had gone together in like sixth grade or something. And it was like, well, that's the platform she's on. I'm like, well, you don't even need to talk to her anyways. But yeah, Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, you can't really. What's funny is my friend has another girl going into her sophomore year at Cienega and she got Snapchat and the mom went crazy for it because of all those silly 
filters. So they used them all the time just to play, and they had fun together, parents playing with these fun filters. And, and I hated them. I hated the filters. I am not a fan the of the filters. filters. I still do. Especially on grown people. I just, I'm not a fan of the filters on grown people. Like, jo- Joanne doesn't have a mic because we have so many people. She's like, really? But they're fun. I could just tell. Sorry, they make me look good. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so one of the things that uh, that also comes up is kind of like, you know, what are you doing on that? What are you? Well, that was another thing I found out. Not only can avatars have secret meanings, apparently there are alternate meanings, meanings to like if you were to send a filter of yourself, even though it looked innocuous, Lisa and I, you would think it meant nothing. But you're sending a message to to the opposite sex by you doing certain filters. Yeah. Only some, <laughs> I was like, um, yeah. Only some people think that. Um. <laughs> I was given very strict okay. rules by um your brother yeah. that uh-huh. I was never to use the laughing dog tongue hanging oh, out. No, yeah, you don't face. use that one. Don't, don't ever use that because that it's like the crazy like, oh yeah, no, don't do that. You know, it was like the, well, and so it as it does in any generation, even our generation in the 80s, you yeah. know, every generation has their code way that they, you know, say flirty or, you know, kind of sexual innuendo um, that, I mean, every generation has that, right? And so I didn't know. And he, so I was like, look at these people. I don't think I like these filters. He, he was like, don't ever put that filter on you and put it online. I'm like, why? Because it looks dumb. He's like, no, because it means other things. You don't know what it means. <laughs> yeah. So here, that's what we have to look forward to <laughs> as the, the world as technology ages keeps going. and technology changes. Well, I just want to remind everyone, you're listening to Ask the Gals. It's our monthly podcast on Tucson Business Radio X, which is a platform uh, of business uh, where we focus on things related to business. Our business is technology. And we always like to just bring in folks and have a conversation about how they're using technology, how they're using social media. I encourage you to uh, check out all the available podcasts on Tucson Business Radio X and just Google hashtag Ask the Gals and our podcast will come up and you can see where to go link and listen to it. So we were talking about uh, parents putting limits on what they can do on social media. And I know uh, Elizabeth and Grace can pretty much do what they want. I know Elizabeth has a little bit more. um, Her mom's a little stricter (laughs) with her about what she can and can't do and what she can and can't have. And I was with Grace more when she was younger. She had a a fake name on Facebook and everything else. But I also know Lainey is not allowed to have social media accounts. So um, I just want to hear what you have to say about that. Does it affect your friendships at school? Um, Um, Yeah, so sometimes it does affect some friendships because one of my friends, who's also Elizabeth's friends, I you having an iPod, I can only text with Apple products. So my friend has a Samsung, so I have to email him every day if I'm going to text him. So it's kind of difficult to do that on some reasons, because that means I have to keep checking my email and stuff like that. So without kind of Snapchat or something to email or get in touch with them, it's kind of hard to figure out, hey, how do I get in touch with this person? Otherwise, um, it doesn't really bother me that much, except when... Like you were talking about how it can affect sleep and stuff. I get my iPod taken away every night. My parents don't let me have it in my room at all. And so my sometimes we've tried it out. We've kept it overnight. And I'm supposedly the most trustworthy one in the family right now. <laughs> um, so I don't really mess with it too much because I'm tired. I'm a teenager. I want to go to bed. But my oh, brothers well. have tried. But it's okay because they figure it out anyways. Um, But I do have restrictions on everything. I have um, restrictions on websites and apps I can go to. Like if you want to download the YouTube app, I can't download it for some reason. It's blocked for me. I can't look up the Vista feed and supply near us for some reason. I can't even go to that (laughs) website. So well, there's really scary stuff at Feed and Supply websites. <laughs> Have you seen some of those chickens at the Vista, Vista store? Just saying. It's creepy. Okay. <laughs> so it's restricted for me. So. so based on that conversation we've just had about uh, the safety on social media and 
how it affects what you can and can't do. Do you, and the article I just read about uh, the potential risks of it, do you think social media contributes more to bullying and suicide rates among teens? Um, and what is your experience with that, either personally or with people at your school? That question is based a lot on opinion, the one about if it causes suicide and bullying. I know it happens. I know that some people do have that happen to them. It's happened to me. But I'm one of those people that if you bully me, I'm going to bully you back, right? <laughs> so, like, if you make fun of me for something, I'm going to find one of your weak points and make fun of you. So people have kind of stopped bullying me because they're like, well, if I bully her, she doesn't do anything about it. Because most of the time, bullies are looking for someone who's going to react negatively towards you bullying them. Um, so it's like, I mean, I wouldn't kill myself over someone bullying me on social media, but I do know it does happen and I'm not going to bash those people, you know. Do you hear very much about it? So, like, as parents, we hear about this all the time. Yes. We are bombarded with messages, like, to be vigilant, pay attention. Your kids could be getting bullied on social media and you don't know it. So do you, not just yourselves, but, like, do you, is this something people talk about? Have you had close friends that have had bad experiences? I'm just wondering how it appears as if you all should have experienced some of this, the way it's presented yes. to us as parents. Um, I definitely see negative stuff on social media a lot. I can't say personally I've ever experienced bullying um, through social media. In <laughs> She's like, well, in <laughs> life. Let's specify. Let's be um, <laughs> in life, in my head, I like to think that, you know, like I'm really tough and people don't mess with me. That's not actually true. Um, <laughs> it's more like I just sort of take it until it goes away. Well, Which is probably not the best. It's away, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I don't really... I think social media is more of just another... It's just another thing. I mean, people can also get bullied going to work. I mean, yeah. it's just another way of communication yeah. which means it's another way people can get bullied i don't think it specifically should be targeted like this is why people are committing suicide because it's not it's just another form of communication and communication can be negative or positive exactly yeah that's exactly what i think as well mm -hmm. and i mean go ahead if someone is like bullying you on social media it's extremely easy to just go to their account and block them or yeah. block their number or like delete the conversation like it's not like in real life where you can't delete the person, right? Like you can't go over to them and be like, you're blocked. You're silenced right now. <laughs> Don't talk to me. Don't speak to me. I'm, I'm pretty done. sure if Elizabeth could have done that, lunch would have been so much different last year. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> it is. <laughs> like, we, we both know got that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny that Jessica mentioned that the uh, media has put it in our in parents' heads because one of my reports comes from the New York Times and it says um, that the largest percentage of increased suicide rates is among girls aged 10 to 14. And it was accompanied by a study um, from an editorial calling the role of social media use among adolescents as an urgent public health issue that merits further investigation. So our, as parents, we're scared to death that you guys are going to be bullied on cyber media and and we hear these <laughs> stories of uh people telling you to do things to kill yourself i mean that little girl what was that story oh yeah you're talking about momo yes yeah. momo okay oh so that wasn't real by the way it i'm just wasn't. throwing that out there to you guys that wasn't that wasn't real, real. it so, wasn't but we all thought it was yeah because your parents and you get scared about these things i've never personally known someone that has committed suicide from social media and there hasn't been anyone like in my school or in any of my schools that have committed suicide from social media, most of the time it's been other things going on in their lives. So I, I think it's, it would be interesting too, because but all of you have had some restrictions, some guidance you weren't, I ha would think there may be some connection with that 10 to 14 year old range, because if the parents aren't really involved and they're out on Snapchat and they're out on Instagram and you're 10, 11, 
um, the chance that you could be experiencing more negative interactions than you're mature enough and prepared to handle, right? Yeah. So I'll say, for example, um, I don't know if the rabbitry people are real rowdy or the poultry oh, they people, are. <laughs> but if you like post stuff and it's like, yeah, I don't know how that rabbit ever won or, you know, whatever kind of negative things they might say. Or you post art and they're like, this is, there's some art hater, you know, you know them or don't know them. But when you're, I think when you're 14, 15, 16, starting at 14, you're kind of starting to figure, ideally figure out how to stand up for your viewpoints a little bit. And when you're 10, you really have no business being on social media platforms at all. No. And that was that Momo. That was the younger yeah. crowd for sure. Yeah. Okay. There's just, I just feel like there is absolutely no purpose for that at all. It's funny you say that because Grace and I are on a rabbit forum right now on Facebook and the adults, there's a bullying going on with the adults. And I mean, it's funny to think of it now, but this lady is bashing another lady for, and they're bashing each other, but the one lady's really out of line you know, saying her rabbits are bad and she's a mean person. And so it's happening more among adults and that kind of thing than teenagers. I've noticed that it's the older generations bullying each other more than the younger really? ones. Yes. I find that the baby boomers on that. Facebook and stuff, they're awful to people. They bully really? kids. Definitely. Yes, We have a lot of nodding heads Definitely. here, which yes. you can't they see. They bully kids. And like they get mad at them and then like, like the millennials are mean to like our generation. And it's like, we didn't even do anything. Like we said that the color purple represents this. And you guys were like, no, it's purple. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you guys, this generation, your guys' generation is very opinionated. Let's oh, just say yeah, that. Really? Oh, yeah. definitely. Nah. Yes, definitely. that's funny. Towards us younger kids. Yes, indeed. Joanne's over there just trying so hard to <laughs> say something. We just didn't have enough room for her. <laughs> on on social media because they're safe they're sure oh yeah you're not sitting yeah. there oh, at the grocery store uh, or at right. the bar or wherever right. yeah it's safer moms, unless it's like at a sports event usually but, going crazy um, right it's yeah. like where do you see but, where do you see adults go yeah, but on social media they just feel safe that they can say anything i'm protected i'm in my pool yeah ball, yeah anything could be said mm -hmm. that's also another big thing bullies they're kind of fading out from schools a little bit and they're going over to more social media because they can yeah. sit there and be like, I can say whatever I want and I don't have to look you in the eye while I say it. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, we had that conversation, Elizabeth, I had that conversation with you where um, people of our generation and the generations in between us, if you were um, gay or lesbian or trans, there was just such a degree of bullying. And we see sure. the huge fight even among our generation about can you have a trans bathroom or not? And should this be legal or not? And just really like deep down, dig in, dig in and fight. Mm -hmm. And I asked you about it and you were sort of you did not think that for your generation, that level of bullying was going on. Not at all. Most of the time, it's kids whose parents believe those things. But I, a lot of my friends and people I go to school with don't care because my school has a lot of LGBTQ kids in it. And so... And you guys have a fair amount at Andrada too, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Andrada is a really big one too. Oh, yeah. Um, but none of us care. Like, go ahead. Go off, sis. Like, we don't care. <laughs> it's your choice in life. You live it that way. Like, that's yeah. your decision. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to come up to you and be like, oh, you like girls? wrong like yeah. I would I wouldn't do that to a straight guy why right. would I do that to a woman yeah it's but, just interesting to see how that evolution is changing on something in that topic where social media was a way that people got bullied you right know? Um, regarding that and you guys going, uh, in, fact, in fact, Elizabeth, you said to me you said actually I think if someone went up and bullied someone that way at my school the bully would get turned on oh, by more people oh yeah exactly oh, yeah yeah, yeah. So, think so too, Lainey, Lainey yeah. has a story about that, actually. And it's interesting because she's not on social media about your friend that was bullying you on social media, oh. even though you're not on social media. <laughs> it wasn't a very effective strategy. Well, it was pretty funny. Um, I don't know if you know about this. I don't think so. Um, so a while back when we were in middle school, I had a friend ish. And we went to high school, and her other friend that went there, she kind of just pushed away. So I became her new best friend, and we went roller skating together. We had parties together. We did everything together. And then she kind of, like, pushed herself away from our group, and another person got upset, and we were both upset together. 
And we had the Korean exchange group at our school, so mm-hmm. I'd hang out with my other friend and Elizabeth there too, and we just kind of sit there for a while. And then I came back to the group, and our friend who pushed herself away wasn't there again. And so I texted her, and she didn't reply to us. She didn't do anything. And then one night, she just started texting me, why are you being such a fake friend? I should have never trusted you. You keep calling me these names, this and that. And I'm like, I just said I was hurt by your sudden disappearance with our group. And her, my friend as well, who was upset, kind of ganged up on me. I lost both of those friends that night. Total meltdown, totally lost it. And I went to school the next day. I didn't really care anymore. I was like, well, if these people aren't worth my time, then right. I don't really care. Um, a couple people knew about it. And then I just got one of the friends back. I'm not going to say the names, but I still don't trust them fully. It's hard. Um, it is hard because right? she ganged up on me and I didn't expect that. But then at least a week later, the girl who called me out on it for no reason started posting stuff on social media. I think it was mostly Instagram. And it was like, well, I didn't know what was going on. She was doing this and blah, 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 blah. Just a fake friend. I should have never trusted her. And my friend came up to me and she's like, hey, did you know about this? And I'm like, how would I know about right. this? And so she's like, well, she's been doing this. And I guess she took it down like the very next day. And I was like, okay. And then I think right before school ended, she posted again. I miss my old friends. But when you realize they're B words, then you don't want to hang out with them. And I was like, Dang. okay. Drama. I was like, like to call whatever. those girls yeah. drama seekers. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was kind of like, whatever. I mean, you're not really worth it. And no. now she's hanging out with the popular kids and she oh, doesn't really sense. care anymore. And she pushed herself away from a sophomore friend that she had that I didn't trust either. So I was like, fine. I mean, that's your choice. But it's just interesting the level at which, um, Elizabeth, I know you've had some situations with people who behave one way in person and then another way when they communicate online, whether that's group texting or mm-hmm. individual texting or actually on their social media platforms. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So how do you feel like that is more of a it sounds like that might be more of a challenge than just sort of the we're going to create a page that says I hate Grace's art and we're going to post her art and we're going to throw like ketchup on it in the so she's like, wait, performance art. Maybe we are doing that. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think as grown up, sometimes we think it's like that, like a lifetime movie. But it can be more this like you're going. I'm your friend. I'm not your friend some group text, things like that. It sounds like that is a challenge as well. Yeah, Actually, that's one of the hardest parts about bullying is a lot of times you don't realize it. You don't realize you're being bullied Mm -hmm. until um, most often I've found once I tell Jessica, like when I go (laughs) home, I go home and I just like, you know, tell her about my day. And And I'm petting the dog. Yeah. Soothing. Um, (laughs) And I'm so, like, uh, that's not really cool. In fact, yeah. that's not being a friend at all. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. I'm, I don't, I try to keep my friend group tiny. Like I have one best friend and mm-hmm. then like a few other friends outside of her that I talk to and trust sometimes. Um, <laughs> and I had the same situation that Lainey had. Um, I was friends with my best friend now and um, three other girls. And this one girl was sp- spouting all this stuff about my best friend's mom. She's racist. She's homophobic. Blah, 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 blah. Went on and on. And then these two other girls were talking crap about my best friend. And they'd pull me in and they'd be like, she's so like, ugh. And I'd be like, I don't see the same things you guys are seeing. And then after I didn't agree with them, they pulled my best friend to the side and started saying, bad stuff about me and my best friend was like you guys are just doing this to get on her bad side or something so I mean it's it's weird it's really weird and then they would do that on social media and then they'd get all of these other people to do it too and then they would realize that's not something Grace would do why are you saying that and I was like I just kind of sat back and watched it happen you know yeah because no one believed them you know right yeah so it just seems like it's more of the same but a different way to do it right well i mean i definitely did not get a good reputation this year i mean (laughs) yeah um (laughs) and i didn't i don't think i really did anything but for being mean (laughs) i mean i guess i don't really know (laughs) but i mean i started high school and in past years of school, I've been pretty chill, just 
I sort of just go with the flow. I mean, I have multiple friend groups and I just hang out with sort of everyone. I don't really like to judge people. I mean, hey, do you? Like, who am I to say anything? Yeah. And most of the times I think, you know, people doing different things, I think it's cool. And so I just sort of float around and do my thing. But this year, I guess there is, you know, a couple of people... <laughs> Um, I, like, like these I, names. I, I like these l- knowing looks between Lainey and Elizabeth because they go to the same school and they're like, hmm, yeah. I can see they're that. Yeah. Like well, and I've watched them. the girls in Elizabeth's yeah. group yeah. act and they yeah. act completely yeah. different when they're with Elizabeth and when Elizabeth leaves and it's just the guys there, they act completely different. And uh-huh. I'm like, why would you do this? And I have other people tell me about stuff that's happened. I'm like, I understand why Elizabeth left groups sometimes and <laughs> yeah. just floated around. Yeah. And I was one of those people who just floated to different groups. And that's why I hang out with the Elizabeth's groups most of the time, which mm-hmm. I'll be doing a lot this year. So <laughs> what's funny is um, these things happened when I was in high school, too. Absolutely. So I feel like it's not social media. It's just life. It's just yeah. what happens as a teenage girl, for one thing. And adult girls. And adult girls. It's <laughs> happening the same. But social media, I can block people, which I love. So <laughs> I just recently had an a experience similar to what you girls are all saying as an adult. And I I blocked them. I unfriended them. And oh, I said, yeah. I'm done. If you don't want to see my post and you want to make comments about it, then I'm done. It's the easiest way to do it. But before we um, close up, because we're starting to run out of time, um, Adults use Facebook mostly for making connections with people and doing research on products or services before we buy. And we ask our friends and and businesses and we research businesses on Facebook to see how, um, you know, good they are and if there's someone we want to do business with that way and we really rely on our friends on Facebook too to to share their experiences with them also. Um, so my question for you guys is, is do you use social media in that way? Like if you see an advertisements for something, does it influence you wanting it? Do you see advertisements? Do you ignore them? Do you ask your friends about things you see on social media? I definitely do see ads for stuff and Instagram, um, because that's the one I mostly use it asks you like if you want to do a survey and it'll say like which ads are you interested in so that it can show you stuff that you like and so while I'm scrolling through I might see um like a clothing line I'm like oh that shirt looks kind of cool and so I'll scroll through the thread that they have or I'll if I really like the stuff that they have I'll go to their account and I'll look them up so yeah I definitely do see stuff like that Oh, yeah. Same here. Yeah. And, like, you get advertisements for games all the time, too. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that looks fun. I can do that with it. I'm bored. So I download it because I'm like, this is fun. Um, I ask my friends what they think constantly. So, I mean, if I see a shirt, I'm like, you guys think this is cute? And they're like, yeah, get the shirt. (laughs) (laughs) So, same. I feel like social media also has a way of um, kind of biasing their advertisements as well because a lot of the advertisements on YouTube and stuff are mostly about vaping and smoking. And so they kind of try to shape you into like, hey, don't do this because it hurts you. But you mm. see everybody walking around with them anyways. Mm. And so I feel like they're trying to help out with different situations, but it just depends of who's instigating it and at what time. Yeah. And you know they listen, right? Well, like I was just going to say, are you have you guys so the most accurate listening of any social medias is Instagram by far. Oh, yeah. And so people are like, "Well, what do you mean they listen?" And so when um this just came out as like a morning story on um Gail King was interviewing the founder of Instagram and she's like, you listen. And he's like, no, no, we don't listen. She goes, no, I'm sure you listen because I can be in a private conversation in a room with two people and I mention something by brand or by topic. And the next ad that shows up on Instagram is that product. Mm -hmm. And ironically, last night, so my dad's visiting from out of town. So um, we have a lot of random TV on that I wouldn't normally watch. And it was the TMZ show, which is like insane, right? It's all their gossipy stuff. But while they were, they were on TMZ, they have all like the little 
journalists loosely discussing. And so while they're discussing, someone said, who bought some kind of shoes? I didn't know what the shoes were, but they said, who bought these shoes that were really highly advertised on Instagram? And someone said, oh, yeah, I bought them. And someone else said, oh, those are good shoes. And another reporter pulls up her phone and goes, I just got the ad for those shoes from the name being mentioned four times. Mm -hmm. And how they listen is you gave them permission because when you agree to the terms and services of the app, it says, can we have access to your microphone? Because how else could you do videos, right? How could you do videos? How can you talk? How can you? So the best way to protect yourself is you, and nobody will ever do this because it's too time consuming, is you would log out of your apps or you would shut off your microphone. But most people are like, whatever. So they're listening. Listening, so they're going to give me ads. So most people I've talked to your age are kind of not caring so much about it. But everyone our age is like, oh, my God, shut it down. Turn off the micro or microwave, the microphone. They're <laughs> listening to us. What does it seem like a big deal to you guys that apps are listening? No, not really. Not I really. mean, it's kind of the same with like the Alexa. I had a lot of people say like, oh, yeah, we have an Alexa. But and of course, I mean, they're listening because they have to hear like when you say Alexa. Um, but it doesn't really hear you ever. <laughs> it doesn't work. Very well, in that case, it doesn't work very well. People, my dad was like, oh, the NSA is listening. I said, well, if they are, it doesn't work because half the questions I ask her, she doesn't understand me. And half the time she doesn't turn on the music. So I'm like, it's not very, they need better software. If yeah, do we'll that, definitely right? be yelling Alexa <laughs> and she does not light up. And it she does often not ignores work. us. Sometimes I wonder if that's on purpose. Oh, yeah. And then if we say something random that has... It's nothing close to Alexa. She'll just light up like, Be like, oh, I'm hey, sorry. Maybe. I can't help you with that. And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. So do you guys uh, watch a lot on YouTube also? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I know there's a lot yeah. of advertisements on there. Oh, yeah. Little videos. What mm-hmm. what are you experiencing with that? I get razor commercials. I get don't vape commercials. I get um, Apple commercials. Apple commercials, yeah. I get some strange commercials. I don't know why I'm getting those commercials, but I'm getting them. Um, And it's like these random commercials that's like, Water, Fiji, and it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's got like the jungle, and it shows birds and children playing in the water. And I'm like, it's water. <laughs> How often do you guys actually watch them, or do you always skip? Well, sometimes you can't. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you can't. Sometimes oh, that's true. true. More of them I'm finding now are 15 seconds, and you can't skip them. Yeah, and yes. that is so such an irritating time Definitely. frame for me. Well, it's how the creators get paid. Absolutely. From the ads. So I, so if it's like one that I can't skip, I'm like, oh, I'm paying this man so I can watch his stuff. <laughs> you know, so like, go ahead. You know, I found a loophole, and I've been able to scroll through it really fast because mine doesn't have a skip button, so I just what? scroll through it. Yeah. Pretty great. Mm. Wow. Cool. Mm. You might need to tell us about this loophole. I like these loophole mm-hmm. ideas. Well, wow. yeah, in some of the strange videos that Grace was talking about, I've had that and I haven't even clicked on it. And there's like an email that pops up in the junk mail, and I'm like, well, this is nice. This is the best email I've ever gotten. Right? I'm just like, yeah. okay, let's delete this one. Delete this immediately. Well, we recently attended a training and they said the ideal time frame for um Video, whether it's like educational content, but our intention is for you to click through and buy something or actually an ad is five to seven seconds on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That when you start going longer than that, which is interesting because the longer ads I see, which are 15 seconds, which sounds slightly absurd, but tend to be on YouTube. But I wonder if the community on YouTube, like Grace just said, is more because they're already on YouTube and they're watching a video and they're like, well, this is the commercial. We don't have a commercial on TV. You're kind of, you know what I mean? Used to it. You like the creator and you want to see what they've posted. You're willing to endure a longer format. Um, So that's just kind of interesting how it's kind of crazy to say, well, we're going to create something in five seconds to grab someone's attention to click through. Um, And sometimes it's like um, when you post a video on Instagram, it can be like, a five second video but then you can press keep yep. watching and yep. then it goes to IGTV yep. and then you can finish watching the video and it can be longer exactly so. and so that's kind of one of the things that we've been getting training on at Too Busy Gals so we can help businesses with that because what we're seeing is people post they do their story from a video camera in the car recording them not talking very interestingly about anything for like two minutes yeah and then they want to upload that and I'm like nobody's going to watch that in stories like Mm-mm. There's just it's not visually compelling. Yeah. 
Yeah. Elizabeth, you're making a face at me like, who would do Definitely that? Definitely not. <laughs> I barely watch, like, the interesting videos <laughs> just because I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so but. this kind of thing's interesting to me because, again, as two busy gals, we're trying to teach people how to market their products and their services. And um, to the younger crowd, I'm stumped most of the time because it changes constantly. So and it goes fast. It so we're, ra- we're wrapping up. I would just like to give one last word to each of the young ladies. First of all, thank you for joining us. Oh, yeah. And what would you say to business owners who are trying to figure out how to work with teens, to sell to teens, to market their product? Good luck. Yeah. We're difficult. <laughs> okay. We Very fickle. Yeah. Fickle. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Should they be present on the platforms you're on? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, if they oh, yeah. want... Uh, they're not like going to get a lot of business if, if they they're don't. not. All <laughs> yeah, right. Well, exactly. that sounds good. Yeah. So businesses, if you're target market or teens, you better be active on the platforms where they are because that's how they're mm-hmm. going to share their information. They're well, not. thank all of you for being here again with Ask the Gals. We'll be back here next month. Who knows what crazy idea we'll come up with? Probably something these young ladies will suggest to us. Uh, thank you for listening. You want more information about us? Go to Two Busy Gals. Um, and we're part of Tucson Business Radio X. Thank you. <laughs>